have to say farewell to them. We're not, it's not that we won't see them again, but it's always have to do this, and we'd like to uh, get together and enjoy the evening and uh, just show them again how, how much we appreciate it. Uh, the evening's going to be informal. We're going to enjoy some fine Pakenham cooking. We're going to watch a slight presentation by Ron Blair. And uh, while we enjoy dessert, uh, I think Ron is calling this uh, 101 Ways to Spend Your Retirement in the Church. <laughs> 101 Projects.
the only ones that are writing that out. <laughs> I've enjoyed my association with Tom and Irene during the past four and a half years, and I wish them well on their new endeavors in Barrett. And in closing, I have two small gifts I would like to present. The origin of these gifts goes back to the kitchen renovations. On this particular day, Ron was busy removing some old telephone wires from the ceiling. Tom offered to help, so Ron gave him the wire cutters to cut off these old lines, but not to cut the one line that ran to the dock. <laughs> well, Don and Gifford and I were working there that day, and in a few minutes we noticed Tom get down off the chair and disappear upstairs. <laughs> he returned in a minute to say, Damn, I've cut my phone on. <laughs> and I'm sure if Tom was going to help build the church, he will encounter situations where wires may need to be cut. So we've gotten him a set of wire cutters. <laughs> just in case a mistake might be made to go along with the wire cutters, we also have some connectors to make necessary repairs. <laughs> Sixty-nine. 
He brings it home and he has it half poured down Irene before he reads the instructions. <laughs> that you're supposed to spread it on the bottom of your galoshes to keep it <laughs>
One day Earl left his vibrating hairbrush on accidentally. <laughs> when I got up in the morning, it was lying beside me in the bed, and I was missing some flap. So I tried it. I used it regular. I've lost 20 pounds in two months. <laughs>
Wendy, what are your talents? Now, I should have learned by now that when a minister asks you what your talents are, you can that you're dumb and you don't know a thing. But no, not me, eh? I never learned, eh? So I was naming all the things. Well, I'm not Sunday school. I sang in the choir and I did this and that. And Tom said, oh, great. So we came out to Sunday school the first time and that thing they hit me with. Well, we're sort of short a Sunday school teacher. You know, would you mind? Well, no, okay, fine. Anyways, I'm still a Sunday school teacher, plus I've been promoted to a Sunday school superintendent. And I've worked with Tom and I mean, and there are lovely people to work with. And if I've ever had a problem, I can always call on them. And if Tom doesn't know the answer, he will find out. And vice versa. He knows that um, if he's stuck for someone to do something, he always knows my number. And usually I, I will do it if I can at all. And we are going to miss you very much. And uh, we want to wish you all the best in Barrie. And we hope that you'll come back and visit us soon.
looked for a site at an earlier date. One of the sites, and I think Tom probably picked it out, was the field where we eventually put the building. And he said, we were looking down next to the tracks. You're a neighbor of the Downies, go and talk to them. So I spent time and I talked to them and I think we were working towards something. And he said, look, we've just had another wonderful site offered to us. You know, go and talk to the Downies and tell them that you know, we just don't think we can go ahead there. So fine, I go and do that. Six months later, the Ministry of Agriculture kicks us off the site, and Tom's looking at me saying, how about going back to talk to the Downies? <laughs> <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> but, uh, I'm not even sure they were surprised when I came in their driveway. <laughs> the, um, another incident related to the building, at the very last minute, when the tenders had been put out and all that somebody at housing had to do was sign a piece of paper and we could start to build, they called Tom and said, you don't have enough people. We have approved you for 40 people, which we only asked them for 25, but they approved us for 40 and the building was all ready to go on that basis and you'd better come down and tell us how you're going to fill the place. Tom phones me and said, we're going to Ottawa, I'll pick you up in half an hour. Away we went, we went in, and I'm still at a bit of a loss about this. He proceeded to explain that he had a marketing plan, and no problem, it was all going to work out, and kept me sitting there nodding away. And he convinced me, so we could be ready to leave, and I say, this marketing plan? Oh yeah, we'll have to work on that. <laughs> What's not? That's the word. Um, the um, point is, though, I think that that drive is what got the building there. And that ability to get people to do things that maybe they might have hesitated, much like Wendy refers to the becoming a Sunday school superintendent, it wasn't something she had in mind, but it's something that she enjoys doing. And Tom has inspired that and hasn't backed off on doing things himself. And I think uh, the situation with our approval from the Ministry of the Environment for the septic tank was the ultimate on that. The documents were submitted to an office in Kingston for six months when Tom, Tom started calling them fairly regularly, uh, more regularly than a fellow wanted to be called. So he finally said he would pull it out of the bottom of the pile and do it and gave Tom a date that it would be done. Tom called him on that date. Tomorrow. All right, I'll pick it up tomorrow. Is the way, that, and I'm not exaggerating at this point because it's got to go to Smith's Falls. So then the guy really had to do it. It went to another level of bureaucracy of Smith's Falls, and they said, "All right, our meeting is next Thursday, and then we have to do a report." Well, Thursday afternoon, Tom phoned them. Where's the report? Well, we're getting it typed. Well, when will it be typed? Tomorrow. I'll be there tomorrow. Uh, which meant that somebody really had to go and do the work that they'd made the mistake of saying tomorrow. He was there, and of course at this point they're shamed into it. They have to give him the piece of paper that he requires, and he delivered it. And that type of push and drive, whether it was working for you or against you, is, is what was involved. So when I use the term chutzpah, uh, sometimes, I didn't tell them about the piano, Tom. So. <laughs> Sometimes it, um, it it pushed against somebody, but for the most part, it got sort of the board, the five arches people that were involved, into what was going on, got us moving ahead and moving along, and, and that's what we've needed. One other note I'd mention is that um, my children have come through, particularly the three-year-old class with Irene. Actually, I believe Deborah taught Julie, and then Morley fell in love with Irene for a whole year, and I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to talk Joey out of being driven to Barry so that he can continue the family tradition next fall. From the five arches and from the <coughs> Wheeler family, thank you very much for looking at me.
hard hat. Sometimes it was hard to tell whether he wasn't wearing a hat or <laughs> but when he was close enough you could see five arches down the But we could just imagine Tom at the building site, at least I did, climbing up ladders, scaling the beams and walking up from the second and third story up there at five arches. Well I thought that's what he might be doing, but it seems Tom is just a ground floor. <laughs> You've heard of white knuckle flyers. Well, Tom's a white knuckle climber. In fact, he's scared skinny on that. And he had his fool for quite a while. Uh, when we were doing the work on the attic in the church here to prepare for the roof, uh, invariably Tom would stop in and he'd say, uh, well, all we had was a ladder up through the opening there in the hallway. Tom would say, how are things going up there? And uh, Tom would say, well, come on, come on up and have a look. But Tom always had something else to do. He was always busy, he never did. Uh, in fact, I think, well, on one day he did make it to the second rock. He backed down quickly and he said, oh, he said, there's a telephone. And Ron said, he says, the telephone's right there, it's not ringing. And Tom was going out the door when he said, I think it's ringing at home. <laughs> Anyhow, Tom, uh, you told us you're going to Barry to, uh, to a new congregation. And uh, we have no doubt whatsoever that in a short time you'll be in the construction business again, in the church, and be wearing a hard hat. So, to prepare you for that, we have a... For the time that you might... They might ask you to uh, uh, get up and put the last nail in the roof, or place the steeple on the church, we want to do this little gift for you. The fact is on. <laughs> Keeping the street clean. <laughs> well, I don't know, but 
Barry's a lot bigger than <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Amen, Alice. I have a feeling you may agree with me that Irene probably made more use of the room than all of us did. And now I'd like to call on Graham Hudson, please. <coughs> Thanks, uh, Chairman uh, Lynn of the Distinguished Head Table, Tom and Irene. I have a few notes here just to keep you on track, because my wife says I'm long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> but do you realize that it's been five years ago this month since uh, the names of Tom and Irene Lowry have been mentioned around Packingham? And uh, come the new tenants of the, of the manse and our leaders in the back of the church. And I must say, for a job well done, and thank you. Being a member of the Pastor Relations Committee at that time, a very envi enviable job was given to me to, to negotiate with uh, Tom. Tom, of course, was well organized and very convincing. <laughs> in his proposal, which uh, <clears throat> he even had it in verse form, it went something like this. Don't forget you're getting a team. Don't forget you're getting two for one. Don't forget you're getting Irene. <laughs> Don't forget we are willing to come. <laughs> so with a proposal like that, what else could I say but you're hired? <laughs> <clears throat> Certainly we do, we do not want to forget Irene and the contribution she's made to the church and, and to the community. And we certainly appreciate him. I had the opportunity to work with Tom on many, many occasions, but I spoke no more than the Five Arches Project, where Tom um, was secretary of the board for maybe 29 or 50 or so. <laughs> and when you meet with a person that often, you get to know them quite well. Sometimes you come to the meeting feeling very down, hurt, and discouraged. <coughs> And you'd have famous one-liners that go like this. We can't possibly meet that deadline. It's just impossible. Another one. I've called the office three times, and she still hasn't got back to it. <laughs> then there'd be other times Tom would, would take the offensive and become more aggressive. More like Tom. <laughs> and you'd have other one-liners. Like Hecky will. <laughs> you can almost see Tom in the work now. Over my dead body. <laughs> Very convincing. <laughs> Maybe we should try the political route. <laughs> Obviously, Mr. Moroni has got to do. <laughs> and another one, the one I really like, you know, when push comes to shove. <laughs> this, uh, I suppose, not only best describes Tom, but even at five arches and in the church here, it took a lot of pushing and shoving to accomplish what we did to accomplish in a relatively short time. And certainly, Tom, we thank you for all the endeavors and hard work you put in to do your pushing and shoving. It certainly paid off. And with that in line, I'd like to present you with a, a little gift.
we've got uh, one more, and then we're going to ask Tom and Irene to speak. And at this time, I'd like to call on Don Gifford, clerk of session. <laughs> Well, I, I made some notes too, and, and then I thought afterwards, and uh, I knew this group that were ahead of us, and uh, I said, maybe there won't be anything left for me to say, because so many nice things have been said, and other things about how pulled his leg and what have you. And it reminded me that uh, years ago I was in a similar, similar situation, and this really happened, and uh, a niece of of mine, and I have a twin brother, Doug, and he and, uh, asked us both to make the toast to the bride. And uh, so we went to Halifax, and uh, Doug decided he'd go first. And anyway, he was the talker in the family. So he went on and on, and I said, golly, this is some niece we got here. I didn't realize. <laughs> oh, this one, because he went on and on. And then came my turn. Oh, there wasn't anything left for me to say. So rather than just saying, well, I, I, I agree with everything that Doug uh, has said and uh, uh, wish you every, the best and everything that's going on, but no, that wasn't good enough for me. I said, I felt like a story I heard last night, and my, and my brother-in-law told me this Newfie joke. And, uh, and I said, uh, I was sort of in that position. But anyway, this uh, Newfie owned uh, Air Canada and uh, said, uh, phone air attendants and the receptionist came on the line or somebody there and said, uh, will you tell me how long it takes to fly from St. John's to Toronto? And she said, just a minute. And he hung up. Don Gifford to be 
great session. And no more got the session out than Jack McGill. He says, why, sure, I'll second that motion. <laughs> Thank you. 
to us because we realized that, you know, this is a country church and everybody knows everybody else. And I said, I don't know who these people are. Uh, we haven't met them, but I said, uh, you know, the, the only place they can be is from Pakenham. Uh, because that's the only other church that we've been in touch with. So I said, get out the lunch. <laughs> don't tell them that it was for hogs. <laughs> service, we had just completed, as you might have known, we just completed a, a new hall on the Williamsburg Church. It was a basement hall. They lifted up the old hall and built a new basement underneath. The old one was falling down. And uh, so we had just finished this new hall. And uh, I said to uh, Graham, perhaps you know some of these fellow, fellow farmers from around this this area, and by golly, he, he did. He knew Bruce Hudson, uh, Bruce, Bruce Garlow, <laughs> Bruce Hudson. He knew Bruce Garlow and, uh, and a couple of others in the congregation uh, from uh, his uh, ag days. And uh, so I said to Bruce and his wife Mary Ellen, now you, you show these people around the, the church. We got it, you know, we got to slip some food in the microwave. <laughs> so by the time they got over to the manse, having toured the new the new hall, a lunch luncheon was ready and. And, and Tommy McCann spent the whole hour saying, oh my, oh my. <laughs> 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 oh, <there's> Irene, <laughs> I, I know with Irene, I also know how to get a call. <laughs> Rapids and across. Well, I'd gone up to Pakenham and gone up through Ottawa. It took me two and a half hours, and they'd come down in a, just a little over an hour. And I thought, well, what are they driving to do to do that? So Graham, Graham, at, when he's leaving, he says, you know, he said, if you if you came up to Pakenham, you might be able to do one of those senior citizen buildings up in in Pakenham. <laughs> and I didn't say it at the time, but when they got out the door. You were talking on your way home, eh? And I was saying to Irene, there'll be two blue moons in the sky before we ever came in. Another one of those projects for those people. So there, there are a lot of stories, Len, that I should probably tell to correct uh, some of the misinformation that, 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 you know, has been distributed here here tonight, uh, but uh, perhaps I'm going to put it in my book, <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. This has been a wonderful uh, time this evening, and uh, highlights some of the past uh, four and a half years uh, shared together, and uh, we're certainly going to both miss the occasions and uh, miss the folk uh, here at, uh, at Pakenham. The, uh, and Cedar Hill. Uh, the, we were out at Cedar Hill last week and they had a lovely sleigh ride, uh, but a very family occasion, you know, in a rural church. A sleigh ride and a potluck luncheon in someone's home afterwards. And a, a presentation for us which included a picture of all the children in their classes in the Sunday schools, to which we shall treasure too, like these uh, photos here tonight. And uh, we'll uh, be happy to return to uh, an anniversary occasion, and to see the rest of that blessed kitchen finish. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're even leaving his homework. Well, that very nearly concludes our evening. I've one thing that Don's already been up. I didn't dare say this before. He. Uh, up, but uh, he said to me, Who's, got, who's making the coffee for next uh, next oh. Sunday night? And I said, I think we discussed that at the last meeting. Who's doing the minutes? He said, I am. 
<laughs> so he's waiting for the minister. He was doing the uh, the coffee next Sunday night anyway. If anybody can help him out. I checked with Mary. She doesn't know. <laughs> Maybe I was at a different meeting. <laughs> okay. And I'd just like to thank everyone that uh, for coming out. And I'd also like to thank everyone that brought food and shared with us. And uh, I just, in closing, I'd particularly like to say to Tom and Irene and to Deborah and David, this is an appreciation night. It's not goodbye. I think I could say on behalf of everyone, Come back and see us as often as you can. We'll be glad to see you anytime. Thank you.